Congratulations on the purchase of your Cuisinart Elite Collection food processor. This machine was designed to give you everything you could want in a food processor with exceptional power and unprecedented capacity. This large work bowl holds 16 cups of sliced cabbage for coleslaw or cookie dough for 10 dozen cookies. You'll be amazed at everything you can do with the assortment of blades and discs. Plus the versatility of having three nested work bowls, which allow you to process a variety of recipes quickly and efficiently. Please watch this DVD in its entirety to get the most out of your new food processor. Also refer to your instruction and recipe guide and keep it handy for future reference. Before I show you how to operate and maintain your new food processor, you need to carefully unpack all the parts, always remembering that some of the cutting tools have very sharp edges and blades. Before the first use, wash all of the removable parts either by hand or in the upper rack of the dishwasher. Now let me introduce you to each part of your food processor. This is the housing base and motor, touchpad control panel, the three nested work bowls, work bowl cover with feed tube, and pusher assembly with large and small food pushers, small chopping and mixing blade, and large chopping and mixing blade, the metal dough blade, adjustable slicing disc, reversible shredding disc, the stem adapter, silicone spatula, the retractable cord, and the storage case. Next, I'm going to show you how easy it is to assemble your food processor. One of the great things about this food processor is the 1000 watt peak power motor which is right in this housing base. Be sure to place the base on a dry level countertop. Note the rubber feet on the bottom that hold it secure through the toughest jobs. Remember, do not plug the machine in until it's fully assembled. Here are the shatter and heat resistant work bowls with pour spouts. Note the convenient measure markings on the large bowl. There is also maximum liquid fill lines on all three bowls. To assemble the large work bowl, Make sure the machine is facing you. Then position the bowl handle just to the left of center. Turn the work bowl counterclockwise to lock it onto the housing base. Again, make sure the work bowl goes onto the base with the handle to the left of center. To assemble the medium bowl, place your thumbs in the recesses, then place it inside the large bowl. Be sure to align it so that the pour spout faces the back of the unit. Now, push down to lock it into place. The small bowl also has recesses for your thumbs which allow you to align the small bowl inside the medium bowl, again with the pour spout facing the back of the unit. Note that you can only use the small and medium bowls if they're nested into the large bowl. Here is the large stainless steel chopping and mixing blade, which comes in your storage case. It has a very sharp blade, so always remove it by grasping the center hub and lifting it straight up. This chopping blade is used with the large and medium bowls for things like chopping onions and garlic, mixing dips like guacamole, or pureeing soup. To insert it, Place it onto the shaft and turn until it slides into place. Firmly push down and you will feel it lock into position. This means you have engaged the special blade lock feature that locks the blade in place, even when you're pouring out ingredients. Use the same technique when using your medium work bowl. To remove the chopping blade, first take the bowl off the base and put it on a flat surface. Now rest the heel of your hand on the rim of the work bowl. Pull up gently using care and you will remove the blade. 
This is your metal dough blade. To insert it, once again, place it onto the shaft and turn until it slides into place. To remove it, just lift it up by the hub. Note that the metal dough blade can only be used with the large work bowl. Next, I'm going to show you one of my favorite features of the food processor, the small work bowl. It's great because it does small jobs along with the big ones. It's perfect for chopping nuts and herbs. First, make sure all three bowls are locked in position. Take the stem adapter and with the thick part facing down, place it onto the shaft and turn until it slides into place. Push down until it is fully engaged. Carefully lift up the small chopping blade. Place it onto the shaft and turn until it slides into place. Firmly push down to make sure it is locked into place. Once again, this will engage this machine's exclusive blade lock feature. To remove it, first take the bowl off the base and put it on a flat surface. Now, rest the heel of your hand on the rim of the work bowl. Pull up gently using care and you will remove the blade. Next, I'm going to show you how to assemble your slicing and shredding discs. Note that they can only be used with the large and medium work bowls. The stainless steel adjustable slicing disc is very versatile, allowing you to cut foods in six different thicknesses, from very thin to medium to thick. It comes in the storage case. Just pull out the drawer and carefully remove it using the plastic hub. Remember, the blade is very sharp. Place the stem adapter over the motor shaft and twist it until it goes onto the shaft. Now push down until it is fully engaged. Use one hand to hold the disc by the finger holes. With the other, turn the rotating hub to select the desired thickness of your slices. While using the finger holes, place the slicing disc on the stem adapter, matching up the opening on the disc with the adapter. Also be sure to use the finger holes when removing the disc. The reversible shredding disc also comes in your storage case and should be removed by using the plastic hub. One side gives you fine shred and the other gives you a medium shred. Decide which side you want to use and make sure the stem adapter is on the shaft. Now match the opening on the disc with the stem adapter and the disc goes right into place. Now that you know how to assemble your work bowls, blades, and discs, the last step is to put on your work bowl cover and pusher assembly. Notice this supreme wide mouth feed tube which accommodates larger ingredients and saves pre-cutting time. The pusher assembly goes into the work bowl cover by inserting the interlock mechanism into this hole and sliding it down until it is fully engaged. This pusher assembly allows you to easily push through foods of different sizes. Notice these special food grips which help guide the food through the tube. It consists of two parts, the large pusher and the small pusher, which is secured with a snap fit mechanism. Use the small pusher for thin items like these carrots, or the large pusher for large items like onions. The cover goes on the food processor by placing it directly over the work bowls. Push down in the front and the back to lock it into place. Another way you can put on the cover is by latching the back on first and then pushing down on the front to lock it into place. The work bowl cover has a special seal tight feature that locks and seals the lid onto the bowl with any nested bowl combination. This seal tight feature allows you to fill the work bowl to maximum capacity without worrying about spills and leaks. To remove, push in both sides of the release buttons on the handle interlock and lift up. One important feature you should know about is the pusher lock, which you will find right here on the lid. Be sure to use it when you are processing heavy loads or when you want to turn your lid over on the counter. To lock it, simply pull out the lock in the handle like this. To unlock it, push it in. 
For your safety, this machine was designed so it will not operate unless the lid is locked in place and the pusher assembly is in the feed tube. Now that your food processor is assembled, you can plug it in. And next we will show you how to use your food processor to mix, chop, puree, slice, and even shred. With all the different size work bowls and different blades and discs to choose from, the possibilities of what you can do with your Cuisinart Elite Collection food processor are nearly endless. The large metal chopping and mixing blade used with the large and medium work bowl takes the work out of chopping nuts, making breadcrumbs, or mixing mashed potatoes. When using the metal blade, be sure to pre-cut foods in one half inch to one inch pieces to get the most even results. Then place the food in the work bowl and put on the work bowl cover. This is the touchpad control panel, which gives you several options for processing. On, off, dough, pulse. The pulse allows the machine to run only when pressed. It's used for items like onions where you need maximum machine control to avoid overprocessing. The on button is used when you want the machine to run continuously. Notice the blue LED light that comes on to indicate your food processor is operating. Always press the off button to stop the machine. For some jobs, like making a strawberry puree, you may want to use both pulse and on controls. Start with pulse to initially chop, then press on to let the machine run until you have a perfectly smooth puree. Notice how the nesting bowls have a locking feature that keeps them together when pouring. Just look at what you can do with apples. Begin by prepping the apples. With fruit, be sure to always remove the seeds and pits. Now cut the apples into pieces. To chop them for a salad, use the pulse button to control the size you want. To make applesauce with cooked apples, press on and let the machine run continuously. This specially designed silicone spatula comes with your 16 cup food processor. Another custom feature of this machine is the metal dough blade and dough control. It gives you optimum results when making yeast doughs. Note that the dough blade is designed only for the large work bowl. Once your ingredients are in, simply press the dough button, then the on button. And the machine starts to knead for you. The dough button allows the machine to run at reduced RPM or rotations per minute for a more tender dough. Now I'm going to show you everything you can do with this six-in-one adjustable slicing disc. From super thin slices of mushrooms and onions to medium or thick slices of cabbage and peppers. To start slicing, insert the stem adapter. Then turn the rotating hub to the desired thickness. Place the disc onto the adapter. Put on the work bowl cover with feed tube. Remove the pusher assembly and place the food in the feed tube, being careful to always pack it full and evenly. Then slice. For smaller foods, use the small pusher. Here's another helpful tip when you're using the slicing disc. When slicing softer foods like tomatoes, use light pressure to push it through. Use medium pressure for foods like peppers and firm pressure for hard items like onions. Now I'd like to show you how to use your reversible shredding disc. It has two sides, one for fine shreds and the other for medium shreds. First, choose the kind of shred you want and place the disc on the stem adapter. 
This side is for fine shred. Like we did with the slicing disc, match the pressure to the kind of food you are processing. When shredding soft cheese, like mozzarella, keep it in the freezer for about 25 minutes before shredding. After you're done cooking, there are a few very important things that you need to do with your food processor. Always unplug it by holding the plug, not by pulling the cord. Note the retractable cord which stores neatly in the housing. Always store your blades and disc in the storage case and note the safety lock on the case which you should always remember to use. All removable parts can be washed in the top rack of the dishwasher or by hand. The housing base can be wiped clean with a soapy, non-abrasive cloth. Be sure to dry immediately. Remember to keep your manual in a convenient place so that you can refer to it often. I hope this is giving you an idea how easy it is to use your food processor and everything you can do with it. And guess what? There's still more to come. Check out the techniques chapter plus step-by-step -step recipe demonstrations from renowned cookbook author and chef Kathy Casey. To get perfectly chopped food, always pre-cut your ingredients into evenly sized pieces before processing. Now, look at the great results. To get even slices from round foods like a tomato, simply slice off a small flat piece. Then it sits straight in the feed tube. Now you will get perfect slices every time. It's important to tightly pack food into the feed tube so it doesn't fall over. This allows your food to process evenly. Remember to use the small feed tube when you are processing smaller quantities. Your food processor makes it so easy to grind your own meat, fish, or poultry. Make sure the item you plan to grind is very cold. Pre-cut into one inch pieces. Then pulse to chop until you get the texture you want. Take advantage of your food processor to slice meat for stir fry to get it just the way you like it. Cut a piece of meat that fits in the feed tube. Wrap it in plastic and freeze for approximately 15 minutes. Then slice to your desired thickness. It takes just minutes to make your own natural peanut butter without any preservatives. With the metal chopping blade, simply add peanuts and let the machine run continuously for two to three minutes. It couldn't be easier. Did you know your food processor can create beautiful whipped cream in just minutes? Using the metal chopping blade, and well chilled cream simply process continuously for three to four minutes until you get the desired consistency. Use your food processor to make a variety of cream cheese spreads that use your favorite ingredients. It's important to start with cream cheese that soften to room temperature. To make a strawberry cream cheese spread, place the cheese into the small work bowl with the chopping blade. Add some fresh strawberries. Process until the strawberries are thoroughly mixed and the cream cheese has a spreading consistency. Here's another idea. 
Add small slices of smoked salmon to soften cream cheese and mix thoroughly. Making delicious milkshakes and smoothies couldn't be simpler with your Cuisinart food processor. For a milkshake, first add ice cream to your bowl, fit it with a chopping blade. Start the machine, then add milk through the feed tube. For smoothies, add fruit and any other salads you are using into the bowl and start processing. Then pour the liquids through the feed tube. Once you've tried homemade breadcrumbs, you may never buy store-bought again. Choose any bread you like and bake in an oven at 325 degrees for 35 minutes until bread is completely dried out. With the large chopping blade in the large work bowl, break the bread into pieces and add into the work bowl. Pulse about 10 times. Then let the machine run continuously until the bread crumbs are fine, about one minute. You can season them by adding half a teaspoon each of dried oregano, dried basil, garlic powder, and ground onion flakes. Simply mix briefly to combine. You may just forget about bottled dressings and marinades when you discover how easy it is to use your food processor to make them from scratch. Into your small work bowl, add one quarter cup red wine vinegar, one teaspoon of mustard, a quarter cup fresh parsley leaves, one quarter teaspoon ground white pepper. Add one half teaspoon each of dried basil, dried thyme, dried marjoram, and kosher salt. With the machine running, slowly pour the olive oil through the feed tube until all the ingredients are homogenous, about 45 to 60 seconds. And your vinaigrette or marinade is ready. Basil pesto is a staple that turns plain pasta into a gourmet meal. First, pre-cut a three ounce chunk of Parmigiano-Reggiano into one inch cubes. Start running the machine with the medium work bowl and metal blade. Drop the cheese and two cloves of garlic through the small feed tube until finely chopped, about 30 seconds. Add one half cup toasted pine nuts to the mixture and pulse about five to six times to chop. Add five cups of tightly packed fresh basil leaves and pulse about 10 to 15 times, scraping the bowl if necessary. Add one half teaspoon of kosher or sea salt. With the machine running, add the olive oil in a slow, steady stream through the small feed tube processing until combined and an emulsion has formed. It's about one minute. Transfer to a glass bowl, top with some olive oil, and cover with plastic wrap. It will keep in the refrigerator for five days or longer if frozen. You don't have to go to cooking school to learn how to do a julienne or matchstick cut like this. Place the food horizontally in the feed tube and process with even pressure to create long plank-like slices. Replace the stack of slices in the feed tube vertically and process again using even pressure.